Hello dear health seekers, Inge from Health Origins here. So just to let you know I've got a little bit of lighting now so you should see me better going forward and today I've got an exciting recipe um, it's a no meat loaf Dr. Furman's no meat loaf a little bit modified because I've got a Christmas themed baking club vegan baking club I'm going to tomorrow so I'm gonna be experimenting and making this to take over uh, to take over tomorrow um, so yeah, so we'll we'll see how it works out the first time. Hopefully it's lucky. Um, so let's begin. So guys, there's quite a few ingredients here. Um, so it, and it takes the longest to actually prepare everything ready. I think now once we've got everything chopped up and ready, it should not take too long. So what I've got, <coughs> I've got about four cups of mushrooms diced small. I've got two big, and by the way, I'm doing a double recipe, so I'll put a single recipe um, down, you know, in the comments. But um, but I'm doing a double recipe. So here um, is two big onions chopped small again. Okay, I've got three cups of brown rice, so you need obviously one and a half for a single recipe. Then I've got one silken tofu that that Mark has. Um, has also um, drained and then I've got a um, hard tofu that's been drained a little bit as well um, so you could do it just with a silken or just with a hard in fact uh, um, I think I've been told that it works better with a hard tofu this is like a smoked hard tofu um, <clears throat> so there's two packages and then I've got four tablespoons of soy sauce. I've got um, just over one cup of celery, chopped small. I've got, um, uh, what else? I've got um, four tablespoons of um, porcini mushroom powder. So like dried porcini mushrooms um, milled up. Okay. Then I made my own... Um, <coughs> Um, poultry uh, spices so if you can buy them buy them um, I've made them with a combination of uh, black pepper rosemary thyme um, what else was there sage a bit of nutmeg and I put a little bit of onion powder as well um, my own addition so yeah so that's uh, poultry um, spices then I've got six clove of garlic I've got um, <clears throat> four tablespoons of tapioca um, flour and no sorry this is arrowroot but you could use tapioca as well and um, then I've got well it should be a cup and a half really no sorry hold on um, two cups two cups of roasted um, um, the um, what are they called? Walnuts. So yeah, so um, walnuts, and I haven't got enough walnuts, so I used pecans as well. So and they're roasted, so it should be two cups, but really I'm I'm short on nuts, so it's one and a half, but it it should work, fingers crossed. And then you need also um, one and a half cups of of um, breadcrumbs okay but here I'm actually using pulp from dried out um, soybeans so, so when I made um, soy milk I you know dried out the pulp and then I've just blitzed it so it's kind of like um, uh, like crumbs and I think it should work okay but obviously if you want to use breadcrumbs one and a half cups for this double recipe or three quarters of a cup for a single recipe so that's the ingredients so what I'm gonna be starting now with is just frying the um, the onion the onion and the mushrooms and the celery okay so so let's go over to this to the um, stove so I'm heating my uh, non-stick pot and it's um, hot now so I'm gonna add my onions so I'll start with onions and celery I'm 
so just let that dry fry for a couple of minutes so it's frying up nicely and it's not really sticking that much because the celery and the onion are slowly releasing their juices too and deglazing the bottom so and obviously the fact that this is um, a non-stick pan um, helps too and if it starts sticking guys you know um, then just add a couple of tablespoons of stock so I forgot to actually mention um, I've got 10 tablespoons of stock ready as well for this recipe so I can use a couple because the recipe only calls for eight so I made a um, couple more so I could add it while I'm frying this and as you can see it's starting to stick a little bit now so I'm just gonna add a couple of tablespoons of of stock and deglaze this and actually I'm using um, the big the big um, what you call these burner um, uh, like a wok burner a big one so it's actually I think frying more than I want to um, so reduced it that should be fine so now um, I'm gonna add the mushrooms okay because um, they will release their own natural um, juices and that should help to deglaze the bottom of the pan as well so as you can see and release the um, the mushrooms release their juices and it's nicely deglazing the bottom so guys can you see now the mushrooms have released their juices and they deglaze the bottom of the pan nicely I've put a little bit of extraction pan going on because it's very steamy so yeah I'll give it another minute or so and then we'll add garlic and um, the frying part will be done so now it is drying out a little which is good so it means the um, the water is evaporating and flavor is concentrating so what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna make a little bit of space here in the middle and I'm gonna add the garlic so we're going to fry the garlic for about a minute you don't want to fry it any longer than that you don't want to burn it and as soon as you start smelling it that's pretty much ready it's starting to smell it now so I'm going to mix it in with the rest of it now and the final step for this I'm gonna be adding my remaining stock so that's about seven eight tablespoons and I'm gonna be adding all the spices so that's poultry seasoning that's the mushroom powder and I'll also add some soy sauce, well all of the soy sauce really and I'll mix it in now and let the flavors kind of develop a little bit for a couple of minutes so it's been a couple of minutes now the spices have been infusing with vegetables so I'm gonna take it off the heat now and get on with the rest of the recipe so now I've got my food processor ready with an S blade and we're gonna start adding the dry ingredients so first I'm gonna start with the nuts okay so I'm gonna 
Um, blend these for a little bit until they resemble um, like crumbs. So there we go, we've got some nice um, crumb consistency with our nuts. So I'll start with the rice. Oops, it's sticky. Then I add the um, tofu. So this is silken tofu, slightly pressed. And then I've got the um, the firm tofu, a smoky firm tofu. And we're gonna blend this up. It's looking good, looking good. Nice and sticky too. So I'm gonna now add the uh, fried vegetables that we did earlier. Mm, it smells delicious, all the spices and mushrooms and onion, yum. So I'm gonna add the um, arrowroot as well. And we're gonna blend and the last we'll add is the um, the soy pulp or the crumbs. And um, we don't want it too kind of mushy mushy, we want a little bit of texture still. So as you can see there's still a little bit of texture but it's nice and uniform and it smells delicious. I've got this in a bowl. I'm gonna actually um, at this point it's a good idea to taste your um, batter and yeah mine definitely needs some salt so yeah so add salt to your preference basically at this point so I think I'm gonna add a teaspoon here <clears throat> and mix it in and then I'm gonna add the um, soy crumbs So now I've got the mixture ready and um, we're going to add it to a baking tin. And um, by the way I forgot to say that my oven is preheating at 200 degrees as well. So I'm adding this mixture to my non-stick roasting tin. It's very sticky. Basically add it in and distribute it evenly in your tin. This is obviously a massive roasting tin because I'm doing a double recipe here but you probably want <coughs> something half the size or you could probably do it in um, bread baking tins as well. You might, you might need a couple or it might be actually okay in one. So, <coughs> so now it's pretty much even and I'm gonna be putting a lid on this. If you don't have a lid, um, just put some tin foil on it because you don't want it to dry out too much. So for the first 45 minutes, I'm gonna be um, baking it at 200 degrees. So here we have our finished loaf. So it took 40 minutes, 45 minutes, sorry, closed, and 20 minutes um, with the lid off, okay? So obviously it depends how deep your tin is, how deep, you know, you put it in the tin. Mine is quite thin, so that's why it was enough. Yours, you know, might need another 10, 15 minutes or so. But um, let's have a look how it's looking. A little sliver out. Let's have a look. Wow, it's looking pretty good, guys. 
It's getting pretty late, but I'll still do a little taste testing for you. So as you can see guys, um, it's, it's really late, I'm ready for bed, but you know we can't finish this video without taste testing how this new meatloaf turned out. And by the way, if you do attempt uh, making this, make sure you leave about good three hours I would say because um, it took me about an hour if not more to prepare all the ingredients to chop things to grind the spices um, to put you know things in um, in little um, containers in correct proportions and so on so so yeah so about an hour and then it took me about 45 minutes plus 20 minutes so yeah so about an hour and five minutes for the actual baking of it okay so so yeah so make sure you pl leave plenty of time so let me taste test this for you guys okay um, there we go mm. this is good veggie loaf definitely um, I can taste a little bit of quite a little bit of mushroom because obviously we added fresh mushrooms and the dried mushroom powder um, and I can taste the spices from the poultry mix so yeah so um, it is really tasty guys and I think I got the salt just right you know it's you know flavorful but not too salty and um, yeah I can see how it all would work out with the gravy with all the um, vegetables and things you know in in like kind of Sunday's dinner or Christmas dinner mm, a little bit of cranberry sauce that would be delicious here so yeah guys um, if you give this a go let me know how it worked out for you did you like the taste um, you know, if you've got any other good recipes for a veggie or no meat loaf, let me know below as well. And um, subscribe for more videos. Give me a, th a thumbs up. Share with your friend if they're looking for a good plant-based um, loaf. Because I will be making this for our Christmas dinner as well. Because it is pretty good. And I hope my um, baking club ladies will enjoy it too. So, so thanks for watching guys and until next food adventure.